So I did some follow-up work regarding my uh, unreliable start solenoid issue that I posted a video about. And uh, my logic was that if I could take my voltmeter and follow my circuit diagram all the way back from the battery as it's fed through to my start circuit, which is basically from the battery through a fuse, through the ammeter, to the key switch, and then when, of course, when I hit the start action, that same 12 volts is routed out the S terminal on the ignition switch through the PTO switch, which has to be disengaged for these contacts to be closed, routed through the clutch pedal switch, which has to be depressed in order for these contacts to be closed, all the way down here to my, I'm back up here and up here and up here to my start solenoid. So as it turns out to the coil in my start solenoid, so as it turns out, really the only four devices, now five if you count the ammeter, the five devices that I have in that series circuit that I referred to before, including the bat, I guess excluding the battery, obviously. So from the battery I have, the first device is actually the fuse Second device is the ammeter, which mine is equipped with. Uh, third device is the key switch itself. Fourth device is the PTO switch. And the fifth device is actually the pedal switch, right? So as I mentioned before, in that series circuit, any significant loss or even a combination of loss, uh, increased resistance, are going to reduce the amount of current that's supplied to the coil in this start solenoid. And by the way, when I talk about being able to supply more current to the coil, what I'm actually saying is more current to the solenoid coil equals more magnetism, which equals a stronger or more forceful action um, in the solenoid itself. So uh, referring back to my last video where I said um, as we add resistance in this circuit, then the total amount of current that's allowed to flow through the circuit is going to go down. And if it reaches a point to where it's not enough current to actually generate enough magnetism in this coil to engage this solenoid fully and reliably, then you're going to have trouble, which is what I was having. So today I got ambitious and it's raining outside. I can't do a whole lot out there so today I got ambitious and I said to myself well look if you can get a circuit diagram you can trace this voltage backward from the battery and see compare your starting your voltage right at the battery which is basically across the battery my negative of my meters connected to ground at the battery and then I'm reading these voltages as I get farther from the battery so for example I found out that at the battery I've got 11.97 volts but as it goes through these devices, I had a tiny bit of a drop right here at the fuse. Uh, no significant drop here at the AMI. I'm not really showing the drop at the fuse, but I did, re I did, mon uh, I did register a, a bit of a voltage drop across the fuse. Uh, no significant voltage drop across the ammeter. Um, and when I pulled out the PTO switch, to actually just check where, where the, how the terminals were mapped and eventually plugged it back in, I found out that even after taking my um, relay modification out of the circuit, now suddenly I'm switching enough current to my solenoid to activate it every time. And all I really did was I had some corrosion on the fuse and some corrosion down in the fuse holder uh, I had a tiny bit of corrosion on the ignition switch, nothing significant, I didn't think, and nothing really on the uh, PTO switch. However, when I cleaned up the fuse terminals, when I cleaned up the uh, ignition switch and ran some contact cleaner down into it and blew it back out, and then I pulled this out and plugged it in a couple times to kind of clean those connections up, lo and behold, now my 
tractor cranks every time. Which just kind of surprises me because um, I actually did so very little to it. Cleaned up the connections on the fuse, and there was some corrosion on the fuse. And unfortunately, I didn't have another 30 amp fuse to put in it, so I was forced to clean that one up and put it back in. But there was about a 0.1 volt drop across the fuse um, when I just turned the battery on. 0.1 drop at the fuse. I never even got to the point where I could measure the voltage drop here when I actually hit the start button. Because um, like I said, I when I pulled the PTO switch out, put it back in, lo and behold, everything works. So now at this point, I'm forced to guess at what the original problem was where I was getting some current through all the way to the start solenoid, which is why I was able to actually um, implement my modification there, and it worked. But now I'm actually getting enough current to this point to activate the solenoid fully and reliably. And all I've really done was clean some corrosion off the fuse terminals, clean out the ignition switch with some uh, contact cleaner, and then blow it out again, and then pull the um, PTO switch, the mower engagement switch out, and plug it back in two or three times while I was trying to check some voltages. And then lo and behold, um, my solenoid's working again. Strange. Um, it seems like it took so very little. I mean, this looks like the bulk of it was at that fuse. So uh, the fuse holder, I mean, it looked a little bit looked a little bit uh, corroded. Uh, even the fuse itself still looks a little bit corroded. All I really did was kind of scrape it with my thumbnail and rinse it off with some contact cleaner. But um, between those three devices, my problem seems to have gone away. So the curious thing is, it seems to have taken so very little to actually cause a problem for me. I was, uh, I was, I was kind of relieved to find that there weren't a whole lot of devices between my supply up here, my 12 volt supply, positive supply, and this, I, 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 and many times I've referred to it as the primary, uh, there's no primary of the solenoid, there's simply the coil, and then there's the switch that um, happens. But getting this 12 volts from here to here without any significant drop in in voltage, which or in any in increase in resistance, which would have resulted in a loss of current through the system. I thought it was going to be some long, lengthy uh, um, diagnostic exercise, but ultimately it wasn't. It was just kind of follow things in order. I started at the fuse, checked at the ammeter, didn't see any significant, actually no perceivable voltage drop across the ammeter. And then a, a tiny voltage drop just in the wiring between the ammeter and what I measured at the ignition switch. Tiny voltage drop, which I considered to be minor and probably irrelevant. But before I could even take uh, a reading at the S terminal on the switch, which is the one that gets power when you hit the start, take the start action with the key. Before I could even get a voltage reading there, I was basically sort of mapping out the terminals on the PTO switch. But by unplugging and cleaning this and by unplugging and plugging this in two or three times, um, apparently whatever connection problem I had has seemed to have gone away. And so she's uh, working much more favorably. I'm still going to leave my modification in place so that I don't have any problems. I've currently got it disabled right now. But I'm gonna leave it in place so that I don't have any problems with it. But of course, I'll have to continue to monitor and make sure. So anyhow, this is just meant to be a little bit of an update from the previous video where I had sort of pledged to myself that I was going to uh, find a wiring diagram and go ahead and trace this back. But fortunately, um, I was able to find the wiring diagram for the first year in that series. It's not my exact model number, but um, I'm going to assume it was close. And uh, it seems to be in order with what I got. I don't see any, haven't seen any deviations yet. So, um... Anyway, that seems to have fixed my problem. Uh, again, I welcome your constructive comments if you have suggestions 
I'll try to implement those in, in this video or in future videos. So thanks for watching.